Hello. The objective of this tutorial is to explain how to use the warped STL feature of NetFab simulation to export a geometry that compensates for displacement observed in the simulation with the original geometry. The concept is shown on this slide where we see the nominal geometry that we want to build, but when we actually build it, it distorts into a different shape shown on the right, especially where the top piece joins the outer legs. In NetFab simulation, we can see the results that graphically represent the distortion in different areas of the part. To compensate for this distortion, we want to offset the nominal geometry in the opposite direction from the anticipated distortion. The theory is that the inevitable distortion will displace the part into the shape we want. You can see in the compensated geometry print scan that the distortion is much reduced in the area of interest. Through an iterative process of adjusting the amount of compensation and rerunning the simulation, we can generally reduce the distortion even more. In NetFab simulation, we begin with a completed simulation showing the displacement results. Now we will prepare a compensated part for export. On the results tab, we click warped STL. The first field, warpage magnification factor, is our main interest here. If we put a positive value here, such as 5, it would increase the displacement we observed and in the same direction. To compensate for the original displacement, we must use a negative number. Let's pick a high value of minus 4 to make the results more visible. Also in this dialog, note that in simulation increment, we can choose to compensate for the distortion of parts on the build plate or after removal from the build plate and removal of support structures. Let's leave the default value of parts on the build plate. So we click export to create the compensated STL file. Note how the export warped STL dialog shows you the name of the file and its location. So we click open folder to go there and import the file. Now, if you move the part around, you can see the compensation applied to extend the geometry in a direction opposite to the expected displacement. In this tutorial, we have explained the intended purpose of distortion compensation. We've shown how to set it up, and we've demonstrated it in action.